it's not water weight, you're delusional. It's fat. It's just water weight. Mukbangs. Even if you haven't witnessed one, you probably recognize the name. There are videos showing their creators eating an insane amount of food while they talk to the camera about their problems or whatever else is on their mind. They are huge on YouTube, and millions of viewers tune in every day to engage in these parasocial relationships, which have launched these vloggers into certified D-list celebrities. It's harmless fun. Right? What started as a way for this vegan YouTuber to break free from the confines of the vegan vlogger drama, it has quickly spiraled into a full-fledged phenomenon with over 7 million subscribers across his six channels. But somewhere along the way, Nikocado Avocado transformed. Literally. What happened to Nikocado Avocado? How did he gain not only 6 million followers, but also over 200 pounds? Is his career dead? Or is the person behind the camera gone forever? Let's find out if there's still hope for him. Nikocado Avocado's real name is Nicholas Perry. He was born in 1992 in Ukraine, but was adopted and grew up in Philadelphia, where he had dreams of becoming a classical violinist. The man has always been invested in drama, and majored in theater performance in college, and even claimed he received callbacks for a little show called The Glee Project. Growing up, he learned of his adoption at a young age and struggled to make sense of it. This led to him bouncing between therapists and prescribed antidepressants all before he turned seven. Along the way, Nikocado Avocado came to terms with his preferences and came out as gay in his teens. He moved to New York City soon after to pursue the violin, and through a Facebook group for vegan men, he virtually met his future husband, Orlin Holm. In 2014, the pair met for the first time and soon enough were living together in Colombia. During this time, Nikocado Avocado began making YouTube videos as a vegan YouTuber, which, even though we mentioned it earlier, it might still be a shock to you. He didn't really gain much traction on the vegan side of YouTube, but then after two years, he surprised his small father following by uploading a video bluntly called why I am no longer a vegan YouTuber. In the video, he went off on the vegan vloggers and how he never felt vegan enough for them. For all vegan philosophy, a lot of their beliefs are based on beliefs. Which makes sense, because if there's one thing vegans and YouTubers have in common, it's a penchant for drama. But this pivot didn't keep our boy down for long, and he soon gravitated towards a newfound phenomenon, the aforementioned mukbang. At the time, it was still a relatively new side of YouTube and didn't have a huge following yet. But but Nikocado Avocado would soon carve out a niche for himself in this cottage industry. He started making mukbang videos with a vegan spin. They featured relatively healthy options like kimchi with crispy tofu and seemed like a natural transition for him. Nikocado Avocado stood out from the pack because in a genre mostly dominated by women, he made a place for himself as a gay man. He also sometimes featured his pet parakeet on his shoulder while he chowed down. Okay, yeah, I guess that's kind of gross. While the content initially was relatively tame, videos of vegan, healthy-ish meals that featured him talking into the camera at a normal tone and decimal, things soon spiraled out of control. As Nikocado Avocado's viewers increased, he started to do more drastic things. The food he consumed went from homemade vegan meals to supersized fast food items. Initially, he capitalized on this change in his diet by making videos titled Former Vegan Tries Burger for the First Time in Years. But one burger here and there for some clout was only the beginning of something much more artificial and artery clogging. Nikocado Avocado soon abandoned his vegan lifestyle entirely in favor of copious quantities of junk food. Pounds of spicy noodles and fistful of queso began dominating his feed. And, if you can believe it, this change in diet began to catch up with him. The first traceable moment where Nikocado Avocado realized what was happening to him is a fascinating case study in denial. While taking a trip to Las Vegas to vlog about his exploits, Nikocado visited the Heart Attack Grill, a novelty restaurant with a name that says everything you need to know about the nutritional benefits of their menu, where he weighed himself on camera an action that he soon regretted. 
as you can see, he automatically questioned the accuracy of the scale and seemed shocked to see that after six months of mukbangs focused on calorie-laden food, he gained over 40 pounds. This is actually a fascinating aspect of the mukbang culture. According to Kagan Kirkeburn's research into the psychology of mukbangs, there seemed to be a psychological disconnect between the viewer and the creator, where the perceived amount of food scarfed down by the person in the video will never affect them. But for Nikocado Avocado, that would not be the case. Now look, it's trashy and in bad taste to comment on the weight of anybody, even a low-level celebrity or public figure. But in the case of Nikocado Avocado, it is so tied to his public persona that it's impossible to overlook this journey he has been on over the past five years. A journey that can only be described as troubling at best. Following the heart attack grill moment, his followers began to take notice and began commenting on his weight. Again, not cool, but I challenge you to find one YouTube video that does not have a string of comments on the subject's weight. In response to these comments, he put forth the theory that his perceived weight gain was just water weight, something he would supposedly drop in a few weeks. And yes, the logic on that is flawed, but the worst part is that he seemed to really believe this explanation. The denial era really jumped out. It's just water weight. And from here, things would only get worse. In the years following the string of videos, he would double the quantity and calorie intake of each of his mukbangs. You can literally chart his body mass increase just by scrolling through his feed. But most importantly, as he begins to put on weight, his mental health severely diminishes. His tone of voice went from an even and controlled twink to something much more erratic and chaotic. Eventually, you get the vibe from watching these videos that he's not really doing well. But of course, as these things tend to happen, as his videos became more unhinged and cringe, his platform only increased. More and more people began tuning in to see this train wreck. He even branched out and created a new channel just for rants and certified breakdowns. He clearly tapped into something here. It's obvious that YouTube is run by clickbait, so the more outrageous the title of the video, the more viewers you will amass. But after all these years, does the public persona begin to eclipse the person behind the camera? In 2019, Nikocado Avocado posted a collab mukbang with fellow vloggers Stephanie Su and Zach Choi. In the video, the three of them joked around as they consumed a massive quantity of spicy noodles. But four days after the video was posted, Su posted a response video titled, Why I Am scared of Nikocado Avocado, in which she described harassment she suffered from Nikocado in the past and during the filming of the video. She accused him of sending inflammatory texts that made her feel unsafe, and alleged that he stole personal pictures from inside her home when she briefly left the room. It didn't take long for the video to reach over a million views, and Nikocado's fans and detractors soon wanted answers. So this inspired a series of back and forth videos between the two YouTubers that eventually spiraled out of control into something that is quite frankly embarrassing on Nikocado's part. He recorded several videos of himself giving a Shane Dawson level freak out with a Jeffree Star level of manipulation that only further twisted the public perception of him. What had grown into a messy and cringy presence had now festered into a full-blown villain narrative. Nikocado Avocado was fully in his reputation era. But that's not the end of Nikocado's antics. While he was busy fighting with the world, he started bringing his anger home, and it started to affect his relationship with his husband, Orlin. A few months after his feud with Sue had died down, he uploaded a video simply called We Broke Up, in which he was red in the face over his feelings. He blamed the negative attention he got for the feud for the demise of his relationship with Orlin. He claimed that the drama had seeped into Orlin's head and changed the way he viewed him forever. This all seemed pretty sad. Like, maybe the fame had truly started to corrode the life he had outside of his YouTube career. But any sense of genuine remorse for him was dashed when this process turned into a tried and true cycle. Within a month, he posted another video titled, Orlin Left Me, I Hate Myself, Goodbye YouTube and Life, which was one of seven eventual uploaded videos over the course of a week that all had similar escalating titles and premises. This was the beginning of Nikocado crossing over from a hilariously cringe 
pinned YouTube villain into a person that is clearly not stable. His video comments started to pop up more and more with replies like, this isn't even funny or entertaining anymore. This is just disturbing and weird. The videos have only gotten weirder, with some accusing Orlin of cheating, being caught in bed with another man, or just plain abusive. Some of the videos even feature Orlin on camera, where he's often provoked into verbally and physically fighting with Nick Okado. These squabbles often end in a food fight. And yet, the cycle keeps repeating. With every escalating video, with ever more insane, grabby video title, there's always a worse one waiting around the corner. Which begs the question, what the hell is this all about? Nick Okado has been asked about this repeatedly, and every time he tries to make it seem like he's in control of the narrative, that he is one step ahead of his audience, who are just falling right into his trap. But with so much of his time spent on YouTube, or directly promoting his YouTube channel, one has to ask, is he really in control of his narrative? What happens when the public persona eclipses the person behind the camera? Nick Okado recently purchased a $2 million penthouse that overlooks the Vegas Strip. It's a perfect spot for him to stay cooped up and out of the public eye, another way for him to siphon off the original version of himself. But perhaps the only insight we have left into Nick Okado, or Nicholas Perry, is another marketable and lucrative aspect of his empire, his newly created OnlyFans account. While initially hesitant, he justified the choice by claiming it's the last space he has where he can be himself and tear down the walls he had built. Good for you, boo. Do with that information as you will, but in September 2021, he announced that he had fractured one of his ribs while sneezing and now weighs close to 400 pounds. All remaining friends and collaborators in his life had distanced themselves, so whatever artifice he claims to be putting up may be doing him more harm than good at this point. And somehow his career is still going. There hasn't been a hashtag Nick Okado Avocado is over party. Perhaps he'll keep going forever as long as people are still watching. But in the end, when his body inevitably gives up on him, Will it be fame that killed Nicholas Perry? Or will the cause of death be Nick Okado Avocado?